Hi, we are going to be talking about risk today. It is the volatility of daily returns, um, the variance, the standard deviation of returns around an ongoing return. So it's a possibility of loss. If you are long and the price starts to go down, you have a possibility of loss and therefore you have a risk, downside risk. If you're short and prices starts to go up, then you have a possibility of loss. That's the upside risk. So the risk is not necessarily one-sided. You actually could have it on, on both sides. We're going to be using Stata. And with Stata, we will um, download daily prices, calculate daily returns, and then look at some of the uh, very common uh, risk measures, such as standard deviation. So we're going to install a command called Fetch Yahoo Quotes, which we've written and we use in most of our classes. And after that, uh, we're gonna download prices. So I already have the Fetch Yahoo quotes installed on my computer, so I'm simply gonna download prices. We're gonna download four ETFs. The first one is SHY, that's an ETF about US Treasury bonds, one to three years. Then junk bonds, uh, these are the bonds that, are, that have very low um, rating, very bad credit rating and an S&P 500 index ETF and Dow Jones index ETF. This is the day JIA. We're gonna download them on a daily frequency and we're gonna use a daily change of log differences. We're gonna download this and the data starts from 2002. So what I wanna do is I simply want to evaluate this for the year of 2018. So let's download it. So as we download them, Stata tells us that they're downloaded. It goes all the way down to 1993, actually. And uh, so the S&P 500. And um, so we're just gonna keep it if the year of the date is equal to 2018. Then we're gonna label our variables just so that our charts are gonna look nice. This is the SHY. So notice how we're gonna have a very flat line almost. Keep in mind, this is the daily returns. So what you're looking at is um, how much did SHY ETF price change on a regular daily basis? This is 2% up, 2% down. And the price of SHY was very, very close to the 0% range. So any daily change was very small for SHY. Let's look at J and K, which is the junk bonds. And notice now that we're talking about now probably a full percentage point in some days, but still compared to the SHY, this is a riskier stock, simply be, a ETF, simply because our daily returns are a lot more volatile. So the volatility, the risk is defined as the average distance of each day's return to the average return. So if we assume that this ETF has an average return very similar to zero, very close to zero, then all these small deviations around that zero, you take an average of those and that gives you the average standard deviation of um, J and K's daily returns. So compared to SHY, J and K would be considered risky, riskier. So let's take a look at S&P 500. Um, now, <laughs> notice how we have 4% drop, 2.5%, and over a 4% increase in one day. So compared to SHY, S&P 500 is significantly riskier because we have days where the stock prices uh, simply went up 2%, went down 2% in one single day in 2018. And 2018 was a risky year. Now, Dow Jones is, is very similar to S&P 500. It's supposed to be a little safer, but... Um, we still have significant volatility around that 0% average a day. So we, this would actually define Dow Jones Index as a little bit more um, perhaps safer compared to S&P 500, but we're gonna take a look at that in a minute. So let's compare these four um, side by side just to see how the risk of daily returns compare to each other. They're on the same scale, so it's a 6% on the positive and 6% on the negative. You see how flat the SHY is and how volatile JNK is compared to SHY. Keep in mind, SHY is the one to three year treasury uh, bonds and JNK are the junk bonds ETF. 
Now, compared to these two, yes, junk bonds are riskier, but compared to these two, S&P 500 and Dow Jones are significantly riskier. So this is the difference between equity risk and bond risk, fixed income security risk. Equities are notoriously riskier compared to bonds, and we're hoping that obviously for that risk, we need to be compensated. So let's take a look at another chart with respect to risk. So this is the distribution of daily returns. Simply what we do is we count the number of days that SHY was around 0%, 2%, 4%, or 6% return. So based on this, SHY, SHY ETF daily return was about zero for 75 days. And you see how we are narrowed around the 0% because SHY is, is very low volatility. Let's take a look at JNK with respect to this frequency histogram. And now we have a little bit more variation. We were about 82, 83 days uh, around zero. We're still safe compared to equities, riskier than the SHY, but we have a variation that probably spends around negative 1% to positive 1%. And we have one day right here, probably one or two days where you have very close to a 2% increase. Now let's look at SPY and then we are going to see a huge difference. Now you have a span of 4% on the negative and then almost 5% on the positive. And we have still about 70 days, trading days of S&P 500 around zero or very close to zero change, 0% zero change in, in a single day. So DIA will be very similar. Let's compare these four together. That's your DIA. And these are the four charts side by side. So you see how the standard deviation is um, you know, very low and the spend is probably around the zero for SHY. And then for the junk bonds, you have a wider spend. And, uh, but for S&P 500 and Dow Jones, you significantly have a wider spend. So this is the distribution of um, the returns and number of days um, that fall into that you know, return bin. So you can see that the S&P 500 and Dow Jones are significantly riskier compared to junk and SHY. So if you were to probably list them in order of which one is riskiest, I probably would say SPY, DIA, JNK, and SHY. Now, just to do a very simple statistical analysis, uh, we're just going to do SHY, JNK, SPY, and DIA, and we're going to look at their standard deviations. And as you can see, oh, it turns out actually DIA is actually riskier. So the standard deviation for SHY is 0 0.0005, for junk bonds, 0 0.003. And then SPY, then you're talking about now, about 0 0.1. So 1.7, 1.8%. And then on Dow Jones is 1.13%. So based on this, Dow Jones had the highest standard deviation, and then the SPY, and then the junk bonds, and then the SHY. So the risk is defined as possibility of loss, and above and beyond a significant um, average. So if the prices start moving in one direction or the other, so let's take a look at our volatility charts one more time. And the SHY is flat, JNK is a little bit more volatile, SPY is significantly volatile, and DIA is evidently a little bit more volatile than S&P 500. And compared to four, the risk now is defined as that possibility of loss, which is greater in DIA, and then the SPY, and then JNK, and SHY. Thank you.